right, let's get Baxter out. Okay. And we can see, we can see we the ready? whirlwind that is Baxter. He's not on a lead yet. Okay, well, let, let's have him on a lead. Otherwise, Baxter will quickly run right, into I trouble. Right, I put his leader here, didn't I, when I said I would stress. I think Baxter's going to present like most miniature schnauzers. Baxter, wait. Adrenalized, moving at 100 mile an hour. And wait. very vocal. <gasps> and it'll be a case boy. of slowing him There's down a little a bit. Boy. Are you ready? See how he comes out. Come on. Hey, come out calm. He's just been hemmed in. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, Adam, I wanted to show you the plethora of leads I've got. I've got a harness, yep. I put him on the collar, I've got a long lead, I've got a slip lead. This is our usual, this is what we've sort of started defaulting to, and I didn't know what you would recommend, so I brought them all with me. So, I don't know if you want to see them on all or. No, like, oh. how do you get on with the slip lead? I used that when he was six months old. He hated it and have not gone back. Well, when you I say keep... hated it, what? He went under the table. Okay. I felt like it was too, too much on his tiny neck. The only reason I use the slip lead is when we go to the front door and I have to get him mm -hmm. tethered. Um, but because he pulls constantly, he chokes himself and he makes a horrible noise. Okay, so we'll, we'll go down here. We, 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 we've got a whole plethora of tools down here anyway. Okay, so you don't want to see his? Oh, no, I mean. Um, I haven't got poo bags on me. Shall that's I get poo all right, bags? We, we, we'll figure it out. We, we've got poo bags here. Come here, babe. Right, he's been in the car for two hours, yeah? Two and a half so hours, yeah. It should have been two, but traffic and traffic so he's, he is pent here, up. Is yeah, so just let him kind of mooch around, see if he wants to go to the toilet. So is this typical for Baxter, like this kind of, I know obviously he's just come out of the car, but... It's a new environment. He's a big sniffer and he's excited and adrenalized because he saw that little dog and he just wants to say hello to every single dog. Here yeah. he goes. And he will go mad until he does a poo. So, little observation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you talk to Baxter a lot. Yep. Yep. Uh, and you send Baxter quite mixed messages in a sense. So, obviously, jumping up in the claws, which you've highlighted on your arm, mm -hmm. uh, is a little bit problematic. But then he jumps up at you and then you stroke him and then push him down. So, <laughs> you're saying jumping up at me is going to get you a reward, even if I then push you down afterwards. Yeah, and he's getting a lot of attention, like when he's not actually doing anything worthy of it. We've got to look at fuss as a reward in a sense. Okay? Yeah. So <laughs> if I stroke Baxter now, one, a lot of the time he won't even acknowledge the fact that I'm stroking him. And two, my stroke is effectively saying, Baxter, you're a good boy. Yeah. Yeah. So if Baxter jumps up at me and I stroke Baxter, I'm saying, yeah, good boy. Even if I push him down and then it sends that confusing signal to Baxter. If he's all over the place doing things that we don't actually want him to do, that's sort of playing into this. Yeah. Then, and we're stroking him, we're basically saying, yeah, keep doing it. Yeah. And we're adding to that kind of energy in which he's at. I mean, where do you actually want to go, Baxter, is the question. Everywhere, please. Yeah. Everywhere, immediately. So, <laughs> a great way of tiring him out, yeah, in a much healthier state for him, is actually getting him to search for something. It's just yes. slowing him down a little bit. He's not pulling as much on his lead. We're keeping him kind of grounded. It's tiring him out in a productive sense. It's mentally enriching. It's calming for him. Yeah, he likes find it, yeah. that game. <laughs> But you see how, look, straight away, a nice little simple game. Yep. And for the first time, he just come with us. So for the first time, his attention isn't everywhere other than what we're doing. It's about giving him something to focus on long enough that it almost deflects from everything else that's going on. Yep. Yeah. And we can just do that. It's by your poor back, so you're going to have to circle back on yourself. <laughs> I'm going to go with you. That's my fault. Don't throw him too far. He <laughs> will just take you with but him. But you can see already, right? So just a few little handfuls. Look who's back in the room with us. By giving him something that is natural in a sense, something for him to actually focus on, he's now no longer so focused on what's going on around him. So because Baxter does what Baxter wants, if he starts to get scared by something, yeah, and then you go straight down to him, right, and you start telling him... Uh, it's okay, mate. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. Many times he doesn't understand that. 
it's the energy, right? So if you imagine, case in point, you're scared of heights, yeah, for argument's sake, and you are tasked with doing a skydive. Yeah. And you go and do that skydive, but your instructor, the professional, the one that's gonna do it all, tell you how to do it safely, is sitting in the corner, rocking back and forth. <laughs> it's not gonna instill confidence. No, so when he gets scared, and you start to feel sorry or start to get very emotional or start to go very soft, you're basically that skydiver and instructor rocking back and forth in the corner. You're not instilling any more confidence in him. Whereas if he's freaking out, but then once he's finished freaking out, looks at you and go, well, you're solid as a rock. You're more likely to do it. So let's go for a little walk, Baxter. Let's see how life treats you. He knows this configuration, definitely. not a huge fan of it. Right? No. Again, but, but the problem is, in the nicest sense of the word, you love Baxter and that much is great, right? You love your dog. Yeah. Yeah. He's a lovely dog. What's not to love? Problem is, right, uh, because he's, he's, he is spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Because of that, Baxter's only really happy to do things that are on Baxter's terms. So anything that, again, is out of the ordinary for Baxter, he has a hard time dealing with it. Yeah. Which is anything that's out of the realm of normal for him. Path of least resistance I take, definitely. And I've gotten to the point where I'm like, just do what you want to do. Which I know is really, when I verbalise it and say it out loud, it's ridiculous. Because how am I meant to get the dog I want if I don't... Yeah. Put, give him a little bit of you have to, yeah but he's lives in a world of discomfort effectively because everything that is, is overwhelming so so i would rather for argument's sake apply a little bit of discipline so I'm just going to let this come in apply a little bit of discipline yeah right so i can have the control i'm looking for Right, I'll drive and do that so I can have the control that I'm looking for so I can take Baxter to more places. Do you want to have a little go walking mm, in? Yes, please. So to begin with, so the end goal is to be able to walk it on both hands, but to begin with, right, what you do, okay, so I'll demonstrate very, very quickly. Yep. Right, so we've got dingo collar, mm -hmm. front clip harness, yeah? And what we do, the dingo collar goes in our left hand to begin with, and the front clip goes in our right hand, mm -hmm. yeah? So it's up with this, like this, yeah? So what happens is, if he really starts to pull, we can just pull up on his front clip harness and it'll just slow him down a little bit. And the rest of the time, we're kind of steering head and body, right? So shorter lead with your left hand. Yep. And as we set off, Ben's gonna follow us, Right, if he starts to pull, I just pull up on the harness a little bit and up on his dingo collar. Right now he's being stubborn, there we go, because there's a nice smell there. This is the art bit, breaking the habits that you've got. I know, it's me, I need the training. Let's go, let's go. Oh, I see it, I see it. You wanna chat? Oh my God, I keep talking to him. And come back this way. Let's go this way, this way, this way, let's go. Right, Karen, in a minute, when she goes back up that Baxter, way, come here. can you come out of a dog? And then she comes back down, <laughs> walk past her. Right, how's that feeling? I'm still, he's still trying to get ahead of me, but a hell of a lot better, obviously. Well, do, walking a dog in the beginning is a series, imagine driving, yeah? Yeah. So, driving is a series of small communications constantly, like, inputs to the steering wheel, like how hard you push the accelerator, how hard you push the brake. Like you, it's a series of things that you're constantly doing without thinking about when you are driving a car. Let's go. Nice. And that's how I want you to talk to him. When Let's you're at home, go. you can talk to him like a baby, but <laughs> when you want to command him. <laughs> straight past it. That's a tree. Oh. Whatever. Oh, this is so nice. 
so nice. <laughs> Walk on the grass, so I'll give her a little. Uh, let's go this way. Go let's go this way. She's going to come on the right. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Who's this? Nice. Very good. Now, do you know what's good there as well? Because you keep good. moving forward, don't stop. If you stop as he's looking behind, he will stop you. Yeah. And then you'll have to drag him on. 